Hey guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube and it's that time of year again, Christmas in July at Fat Quarter Shop. We have this brand new free pattern called All the Trimmings and we've stitched it with chalkboard black 14 count Ada by Witchell and we stitched with Weeks Dye Work so that you could see the pretty variegation. And if you're a beginner and you would like to use DMC, we also have that thread pack available too. We're offering a matching needle minder and three Mad for Plaid project bags to keep you organized. So pick up the free pattern at Fat Quarter Shop, stitch it, and let's gift wrap it. We're gonna be adding this aqua fabric around the edge to create a border that goes within our frame. To do that, I would like a quarter inch showing, and I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna cut half an inch away from the furthest stitch on the outside. This gray X is the furthest stitch to the right. And so I'm gonna line up my ruler where half inch is showing here, and I'm gonna line up this line on the bottom so that I know that it is straight. And I'm gonna make sure my half inch up here is also hitting my ruler. So I'm checking here, here, and here, and I'm gonna cut. Just put your hand on your ruler and cut. I'm gonna just keep going on all four sides. This is my furthest stitch to the right, so I'm gonna line up my half inch line on my ruler with that stitch, and I'm gonna line the top of my ruler up here, so I've got it measured here and here, and I will cut. This is my furthest stitch, so put your top of your ruler here, half inch here and half inch here, and cut. And by having the ruler up here, it's gonna make sure that when you're finished with this, it's an exact rectangle and all the angles are correct. So from here, I wanna line up the top, the half inch, and make sure this is straight across here. And it looks really pretty. So now we are going to cut our fabric to add a border to the outside. I have my piece of fabric just cut off the bolt. I've got my fold at the bottom and it's double layered, just like it comes off the bolt. I'm going to do a straightening cut so that you have a straight edge. And I'm gonna cut two four inch strips. It's gonna be way bigger than we need, but it's gonna give us enough to wrap around the back and finish nicely. So two four inch strips. Save this for another project. On my fold that's up here, I'm gonna just cut across because I don't need that. And what we're gonna have here is four pieces of fabric that are straight on both sides so that we can add to our piece. I have my cross stitch piece and my borders. I like to add to the left side first and then the right side. We'll add the top and bottom later. From here, I'm just gonna trim these pieces down. We don't need that. And I'm not gonna trim this yet. I'm just gonna put this right side together. Today I'm using Wonder Clips instead of pins so that I don't snag any of my cross stitch stitches. Now we'll go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna use an Aurifil Gray thread, 100% cotton, and stitch all the way from here to here with a quarter inch seam. I'm going to leave the fabric on top and the cross stitch below, and we will stitch further out than the piece, which will keep it more secure when we're finished. I'm gonna stitch with a 2.0 stitch length. I'm using a quarter inch foot with a guide so I can just put the edge of the foot right next to my cloth and just stitch down the entire side. Now, since I have stitched past my cross stitch cloth, I did not need to back stitch. Do the exact same thing on the other side. So we've added our borders, and what we wanna do is press away from the cross stitch piece. So I'm gonna just put the iron right on the edge where that stitch is, just to kinda lock it in. I'm not gonna put the iron over my cross stitch. 
Now what I'm going to do is finger press this away from my cross stitch piece and just get it nice and flat with your hand. From here, you can either iron directly on here like this and I'm not putting my iron on the cross stitch piece at all. On this side, you can finger press this down and your other option is to use a yarn tree pressing cloth that you can get at Fat Quarter Shop. Just put it nice and flat and iron on top. And on this piece, I would not use steam since we stitched our piece with Weeks Dye Works, which is a hand dyed thread. So that's two ways you can press your first two borders. This yarn tree pressing cloth is a great tool to use to protect your cross stitches from getting smushed by the plate of the iron. So now that we have the sides added, we're gonna add our top and bottom. Before we do that, I'll just turn the piece on its side, line up my Creative Grids ruler with the Ada cloth that we cut previously, and you'll just cut the borders on the side to be flush with the Ada cloth and we'll do the same thing on the other side. And from here, we'll just add these last two borders. And when you're adding the border right here, this is your salvage and you can see these dots. You wanna make sure that's not in your piece. So just make sure that is off to the side. And we'll trim this down just like we did previously. So when you start stitching, you can just start stitching out here and then just stitch all the way across and past your stitching down here. And we're gonna go to the sewing machine. Again, start stitching out here. Stitch all the way down without a back stitch and just use a quarter inch seam. So we're gonna repeat the same pressing that we did previously, and it's looking so cute, it would even look great as a pillow. So from here, I'm just gonna cut off the edges, and this doesn't have to be cut perfectly because we're gonna put it in a frame and the edges are going to be hidden. And now we can move to fully finishing our beautiful piece. We have a nine by 12 standard frame, and what's great about that is the sticky board is gonna fit right in the back of it, so we won't even have to cut the sticky board down. So we're just gonna have a nine by 12 sticky board that goes in our frame. We'll set the frame aside. So on the sticky board, one side will have a paper that will peel right off. We're using an 80-20 batting and just get it nice and flat. You don't want any wrinkles on it and it's just gonna be real easy. Just flip that over, cut along the edge with a rotary cutter. You could even use scissors if you wanted to. And then we're gonna put our piece on top of the batting. Now, you don't have to use batting, but I do because I like the piece to be a little bit fluffy on the front rather than flat. I took my glass out of my frame. It's gonna be the same exact size as my sticky board with batting. And just be careful because it is glass. These two sides would be even and then these two sides would be even. I just use my ruler to get it about the same size. So now it looks about right. So I'm just gonna use a friction pin on the edge. That'll tell me where I'm gonna fold it over to the back. And we're not gonna use the glass on the piece, so just discard your glass in a safe manner. So we have our sticky board with our batting on top. The back is just plain. I'm gonna use the lines I drew to center it over my batting. And when you're doing a finishing like this, it's always best to do two sides first and then do another two sides after. And I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna do the top and the bottom first. And I'm gonna use this double-sided stitchery tape by It's So Emma, just tape that down on the top. And you can move it around if you don't like it. And you just pull the tape off. So this tape is, is where you can reposition. It's not too strong, so if the first time you do the placement and you don't like it, you can undo it. 
and you don't have to stick it down real hard. Just look and see, and that looks really straight on the top and the bottom, and that looks like it's gonna be straight. So I'll do these two sides next. Now I'm just gonna tape from here to here because I'm gonna do my corners later. And that's why we cut this super wide so that you would have some room to position back here and maneuver. And if you don't have a big enough piece on the side, it's gonna be a little bit harder to do that. And that looks really nice. Now you have these black markings here. They're gonna actually be hidden within your frame, but if you want them to come off, heat will take them off. And I am going to now work on each corner because these are all left over a little bit flappy. So what I like to do for my corners is just use some of this stitchery tape, cut a piece off and just tape it down. And just make sure it looks good on the front. On the back, it can be as messy as it wants. As long as you have a nice corner, it'll be totally fine. I just don't like to do this whole big like chunk it up right there because it's going to become too chunky on the back. So just kind of as flat as you can get it without it going to the front is best. And now you can either put this in your frame or add your fun embellishments I'm about to show you. Now we're gonna embellish our piece with a little red ribbon and we're gonna do that because then it's gonna make it look like a little gift. So we just have some quarter inch ribbon that we got at Hobby Lobby. It's really pretty and the red matches the Weeks Dye Works. So on the ribbon, if you kinda wanna hold it in place before you go to the back, you can put little pieces of stitchery tape here and just pull the back off and you can just place it. And we were thinking of just doing slightly over the Ada, but not over the stitches. And just like a 45 degree angle. And when you just pull it to the back, it's gonna be super easy. Don't try to do this, cause it's gonna look funny. What you'll do is just pull it right back here where it goes naturally and just push that down. Now, of course you could use washi tape. You can use any kind of tape you want, but the stitchery tape is going to keep the fabric in place better than other tape. And we'll do the same thing up here. And I'm gonna to try to get this about the same angle as the other one. And then again, just pull it to the back and tape it down. And now we can pop it in our frame. And then we've taken the glass out and just get all of these little frame pieces kind of out of the way and just gently put this in, making sure you don't hit anything with this. And then on the back, you just pop it in. This one doesn't have really a stand so it doesn't have to be a certain way. It doesn't have to be right side up because we're gonna just put it on an easel but if you needed it to be right side up, I would just pay attention to where this is. And ta-da, look how pretty that looks. It's amazing. And that's a gift wrap on the All the Trimmings cross stitch piece. And if you would like more inspiration on cross stitch finishing, you can check out the same piece finished by Priscilla Blaine of Stitching with the Housewives. All the information is on her blog, which is priscillas2000.blogspot.com. And if you want to check out our free All the Trimmings quilt pattern, that's also available at Fat Quarter Shop and on our Fat Quarter Shop quilting YouTube channel. See you there.